Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here, and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. I am grateful to be here, and I am glad to be here. So glad to talk to you today. Last week, on Wednesday, the day following the election, my wife Lori shared a post with me that was in Facebook from a friend of hers. It humored me so much that I decided to send it out to all of you right then. Why? To make a point that was time sensitive in the moment about perception. For those of you that saw it, I hope you were humored by it as I was. For those of you that did not see it, let me share it with you right now. Election day has come and I've seen a lot of hate spewed in recent months about a man who is a constant winner and overachiever. And that's what the people who support him like about him. Yes, he's been caught in lies and twisted the truth a little, but he's still out there proving his haters wrong time after time. Some people are jealous of someone who is successful, powerful, and has a lot of money. Throw in a hot foreign model at his side and they hate him even more. You may not have wanted him in his role, but he's there now and there's nothing you can do about it. I know it's possibly going to get worse in over the next several days, but like him or not, Tom Brady is really turning things around in Tampa. Okay. How do you feel? <laughs> okay. Perception. What an interesting thing. So interesting that I decided to dig deeper and I've discovered that there's several recent scholarly studies that address the mind, our thinking, our behavior as it relates to our perceptions. So, so, so fascinating. So much so really that it changed my perceptions about perceptions. Now, I'd love to go deep. I'd love to spend hours conversing about this, but it's important for us to understand some basic premises. We're living in a VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. And to understand the power of perception is important for us to be better, even better leaders. So there is perception, there's opinion, and there's fact. Perception is what you're influenced by, and then what you interpret, how you interpret it. So it's, first of all, it's the view of yourself. Secondly, it's the view of others. And then thirdly, it's the view of everything else around you. Everything that's happening from temperature to attitude to a host of everything develops our perception. And there's just so much to that. Opinions, on the other hand, is what you have decided about something. I have this opinion. Many times it's based upon our perceptions of what we've decided. It's, it becomes a belief. A fact then is a fact. It's reality. Let's give you a simple example, one that you'll recognize, I'll bet. And that is just assume for a second that a recognized Republican leader gets up, reads a policy statement that's essentially verbatim from the Democratic platform. So a significant of Democratic Democrats, significant number of Democrats would immediately criticize it and vice versa if it happened with back, with the other, just backwards. You see, the minute that that gets out there, their perceptions go to work and your perceptions take over. And it's even more so if they become opinions. And you know, it doesn't take too long in today's social media technologically driven world before the technology senses your perceptions and you are spoon fed more and more information from like-minded perceptions until your perceptions become your opinions, your belief. And it may or may not have anything to do with reality. So much so that people can come to believe something that is false if it is reinforced by their information networks. And even it, when it's true, and even when it's revealed through maybe fact checking or some other means, many times that person is gonna dig in their beliefs instead of changing them. So where do we get our news from? More and more it's coming from social media feeds, right? That are molded to our own preferences and our own worldviews. It becomes very easy to learn about the world in a way that never requires us to question any of our previously held assumptions. We just hear our own views echoed back at us. And in such an environment, the power and acceptance of perception may be one of our greatest challenges. Now, knowing that perception begins with self, if you want to change the world, then it starts with you. How can you change the perception of yourself? What is your perception of you? 
You recall the story of the janitor at Cape Canaveral when asked in the presence of JFK what his job was and he replied, I'm doing my job to put a man on the moon. You could have asked another janitor in the same situation, same environment, and you might have gotten a different answer. I'm just a janitor. Two people can be doing the same thing but with quite different perspectives and consequently so many different outcomes. For me, to help me become have better perception of myself. I've carried a laminated quote in my accountability journal. The quote itself is the object of misperception. For years, this quote was attributed to Nelson Mandela's inaugural speech. However, we all know now that it came from Marianne Williamson. But I have it laminated. It's in here. I try to read it every day. I don't always read it every day, but I try to. I'm, and Anyway, here's what it says, and I have it memorized at this point in time. So basically it says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just within some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. As we are liberated from our own perceptions, our presence automatically liberates others. This quote is easy to find. You may want to laminate it for yourself. You know, we only have so much time in a day, in a year, in a lifetime. We get to decide what is it that is important to us. And as we learn to distinguish between perceptions, opinions, and facts, we will become even better leaders. Make life meaningful. Live life deliberately. I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye-bye.